There is a boss level question. If you've been following all the videos in this series, you will know this question. What is going to be the output when this piece of code is run? This is actually a tricky question. So let's break this down step by step. First thing, JavaScript encounters the for loop. It goes to the call stack. Then it encounters var. Var has global scope. So it goes outside of the for function into the global scope, which means at the top of the function. Then i equals zero. I gets initialized to zero. I less than three, i plus plus. We start the for loop. The first thing we see in the for loop is the set timeout. Console log t i comma zero. Because it's a set timeout, it goes to the which queue? Micro task or macro task? It goes to the macro task queue. So it gets lower priority than the promise queue. Next thing we see is promise.resolve. Promise.resolve goes on the micro task or macro task? Micro task queue. So it goes on the micro task queue, which has higher priority than the macro task, which is where our set timeout was. Promise.resolve.then sees the first console.log. We're not going to take a look at this until we execute the micro task queue. So console.log, we're going to look at that later. And then there's another set timeout in it, which we're going to take a look at that later when we're taking a look at the promise.resolve. Now, the for loop runs three times, which means, again, we look at set timeout, put it in the macro task. Again, we take a look at promise.resolve, put it in the micro task. So this way, we have three set timeouts sitting in the macro task queue, and we have three promises sitting in the macro task queue. We can't execute them yet because we got to make sure that do not have anything else that needs to go in the call stack. So then we take a look at the next line of code where i becomes 99. So remember, when for loop was executing, the value of i changed from 0, 1, 2, 3. And now i becomes 99. Bar was used, so it's a global variable. Then when we log console.log s, it is a call stack function because it goes in the main thread. Then when we encounter console.log, we log log it immediately. So we'll get s comma i, the value of i being 99. So the first thing we see is s 99. Now, any, no, there's nothing else on the call stack queue. So we come back to our micro task queue, which is where our promises are sitting. The first promise results, it says console.log p, the value of i at that point is 99. So we get p. And then the next thing we see is set timeout. We can't execute set timeout yet because we got to put them in the micro task queue. So it goes at the bottom of the micro task queue. So we're going to put console.log pt at the bottom of the micro task, but we have to put three of those because remember we had this executed three times. So the next thing we encounter is console log p value of 99, p 99, p 99. And then we finally look at the set timeout earlier that we had because that is the set timeout sitting at the top of the macro task queue. We log t three times with the value 99 and then finally we log pt with the value 99. If this did not make sense to you, watch the full video on promises. I promise you this will make sense to you after that video. Like and subscribe for more.